So uh, let's go ahead and get started since we only have about 10 minutes. Um, welcome to Jupiter Lab on the cloud. Um, so Jupiter Lab is a resource. Oh, right. Let me talk about the series a little bit. So we're kicking off this series. We're going to do some explainable ML, some other stuff. If you have ideas for more things you'd like to see, uh, go ahead and email home series at dnanexus.com. Um, my name is Ben Busby. For those of you who don't know me, I've been a computational biologist for a long time. I was at the NIH for about a decade. Now I work for DNA Nexus, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I roast uh, about 95% of my own coffee. I get it from a place called Sweet Maria's, and this is the SR500 coffee roaster. I was just showing Brenton uh, that I roast my coffee with. So, um, however, uh, what we're here to talk about today is Jupiter, uh, and specifically Jupiter on the cloud. Uh, Jupiter Notebooks and Jupiter Lab are made by the Jupiter Foundation, as all of you probably uh, already know. Um, and if, unfortunately, uh, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of uh, Jupiter Notebooks and how to use them is going to be a bit beyond the scope of the next nine minutes. But uh, if you are totally new to this uh, whole ecosystem, please check out uh, software carpentry, Jupiter Lab, and the other amazing tutorials on the carpentries. Uh, so a bit of a plug for them. Um, great. So uh, what can you do with Jupyter Notebooks? Well, we're going to dive into that in just a second. I'm going to show you how to launch some Jupyter Notebooks, some cool things you could do with uh, the terminal, particularly on DNA Nexus, but this should be uh, applicable to a number of cloud platforms, although I will highlight uh, differences between uh, sort of a uh, uh, DNA Nexus, bare metal cloud a little bit. But uh, before we do jump in, um, I think, you know, with any sort of data science technique, uh, really you want to make sure uh, that you take a step back and think about your, what data you're using, how you're going to use your data, is your data clean enough to answer the questions you want to ask, that kind of thing. Um, all right. And then uh, what I'm really going to launch off with is tools for the broader data science community. So uh, as all of you who are data scientists know, uh, you use uh, uh, these types of things all the time. Biocon, Conductor, Bioconda, Docker, uh, GitHub, of course. Um, and so really, um, I think it is crucial uh, to use these types of tools uh, in the Jupyter Lab environment. Uh, DNA Nexus has enabled that. It's sort of the bells and whistles on the Jupyter Lab terminal. And that is pretty awesome. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch some Jupyter Notebooks. Um, and uh, I'll show you how to launch them on the DNA Nexus terminal. If you're not a current DNA Nexus customer, it should be. Hopefully, it's relatively similar for you. Again, DNA Nexus has lots of bells and whistles. If you're going to be a UK, uh, UK biobank investigator, or if you are a UK biobank investigator, we are launching a research platform for UK biobank where you can use these Jupyter Notebooks. So. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. So I'm going to go uh, into DNA Nexus and uh, go ahead and log in. So everything in DNA Nexus is uh, wrapped in our security layer. That includes um, the uh, the uh, Jupyter Lab uh, sort of uh, interface. Um, and uh, but I'm just going to show you how to uh, launch in Jupyter Lab. So if you you would get to the screen by going to Tools, Jupyter Lab. If you don't have that, talk to your sales rep. We'll get you set up. Don't worry about it. Um, all right. So I'm going to launch a new Jupyter Lab, and I just want to show you some things. So I'm a fan of metasyntactic variables. I might call it test foo or greatest notebook, whatever. Um, and then here I got to select a project, um, and I'm going to select one I use for bioinformatics education all the time. Um, so that shouldn't be spinning, but I'll just grab this one. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, you can snapshot Jupyter Notebooks. I'll show you that a little bit later on DNA Nexus. That's a really nice feature. Again, one of the bells and whistles that DNA Nexus gives you uh, on the cloud. And actually, for a lot of the stuff I do, I don't actually need anything that big. Um, I could adjust this down to, say, two hours. So um, whatever. I would also like to point out that uh, so all of our notebooks come standard, Python R, but we also have a specialized sort of machine learning uh, notebook with uh, Keras pre-installed, all of that, so on and so forth. Uh, so that's really not, and TensorFlow, all of that. So, um, and I've talked a little bit about that uh, in a machine learning webinar I did last month, um, as well as uh, in future. Um, also, if uh, you need Spark for any reason, uh, if you're, um, if you're moving data using the DX Data API from Apollo, like if you're a UK Biobank user, um, 
or you want to open up like a massive CSV or VCF file, check out the Spark clusters. Uh, we have Hail uh, as well as a couple of implementations of Coel. So um, obviously Spark clusters are a little bit more uh, expensive, uh, but obviously you can upload huge amounts of data. And I'll show you one example of that uh, Spark uh, data uploader API in just a second. So um, what I want to do now, um, so I'm not actually going to launch this one. I'm going to go ahead and open one that I pre-made for you. They take about five minutes to launch on DNA Nexus. And this is an HTTPS app. In theory, you could build this uh, on DNA Nexus. It'd probably take you a couple of years. Um, and or you could just uh, use the DNA Nexus one. Um, so the part of uh, the Jupyter Lab experience on DNA Nexus that I haven't used the most is this. Uh, it is the terminal. So here you can open uh, Python notebooks, R notebooks, you can open consoles. Uh, but really, I use the terminal the most. Why do I use the terminal the most? Because I can. I got to turn that off. Um, I. Uh, I can use Docker, that's a tab complete. I can use Conda, that's a tab complete. And I can get clone stuff. So I can go over here, uh, grab this, uh, a little bit of foreshadowing. Uh, that's a repo called Shap. Uh, go back to this and get clone that. Uh, boom. So uh, I just get clone that into my Jupyter Notebook environment. Um, and so I have that and it is good to go. Um, now it exists in my... Um, it, it exists in my Jupyter Notebook terminal, but I'd like to point out, so here I have a DNA Nexus project with lots and lots and lots of stuff in it. So um, I could say DX CD tools. If you're not familiar with the uh, DX toolkit, just uh, Google for it. Um, and then what I could do is DX upload uh, chat. Um, and, uh, and I do need to use the recursive option. So DX upload R, chat. Boom, it's going to upload everything in that Git repository. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing that I mentioned uh, I could do, and as you can see, even large files, it goes really quick. So uh, it's not something I really worry about. Um, so another thing I can do, um, I don't have to upload and download them. Uh, it really has special handling, uh, is I can go to notebooks. Um, and I can grab a notebook here. Uh, I've picked a couple of uh, DEC uh, notebooks to show you. Uh, here's another one. Um, and so here's uh, an R notebook, uh, here's a cleaner version, uh, where all I've done is install uh, Bioconductor. And then here are a couple Bioconductor packages, including DEC. And for those of you who are uh, aficionados of the Tidyverse, uh, here's a Tidyverse. And uh, this is a base notebook that will probably end up in our uh, Jupyter Notebook library pretty soon. So um, you'll be able to access that pretty easily. Um, and then I have a similar one, uh, a base notebook for Python, just for people to be able to jump off from. So same kind of deal. Uh, I've configured Bioconda. Um, shout out to those folks. They're awesome. Uh, as well as uh, pandas. I mean, of course, uh, you're going to want pandas. And uh, pro tip, if you want to... Um, if you want to cross between uh, R and Python data frames, uh, you can go ahead and uh, um, instantiate RPy2. So something to check out. Then, of course, you can make uh, much more complicated notebooks if you want to. So here's a TCGA notebook. Um, and just to show you sort of the header, you can do fancy things with Bash Magic. This is RPy2 I mentioned earlier, as well as DX data, uh, which you can uh, use to, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, the, as well as DX data, uh, which you is you can use to uh, grab data from Apollo uh, via Spark, and that's really nice. Uh, here you can see PySpark opening some things up, so that that's great. Um, and with that, um, I just want to go back to the slides and wrap things up real quick. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think I've uh, outlined all of the stuff you could do, except running Jupyter notebooks headlessly. So. This is one of my favorite features, something I'm very, very excited about. And I want to be honest, I was running a hackathon, I think it was in 2017, and we were talking about running Jupyter Notebooks headlessly, uh, sort of to run like projects. And, and that was almost like, it was like theory at the time. And now, um, I explained this before, uh, you can just do it. So uh, if you're a DNA Nexus customer, you can get in uh, to these um, things. Or if you're not, uh, just grab a DNA Nexus uh, like um, username, uh, just create an account and you can jump into this um, and then you can run these things headlessly. And this is, 
this is so cool. I mean, really, I think this is like a baby step towards the future of data science. Uh, so something definitely to check out. And we actually have a prototype, uh, you heard it here first, where you can actually use paper mill to uh, convert Jupyter Notebooks to DNA Nexus apps. So for those of you who are DNA Nexus users, uh, hopefully that's coming soon. And it's a really, really neat project. Um, so uh, that's most of what I wanted to say. Um, I could talk about Spark for a while. If you want to um, see a Spark coffee, uh, let me know. I'll get some friends. Uh, we'll put one together. Um, just uh, write to home series. And uh, with that, um, oh, yeah. And you can do more complex things uh, with the Jupyter Notebook terminal. Uh, I presented using something uh, UCLUST, uh, or sorry, UNET, um, in a machine learning webinar I did a couple of weeks ago. You can check that out here if you want. Um, and with that, uh, I'd like to thank a bunch of people uh, who uh, helped put this together. And uh, with that, have a great rest of the week. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this coffee break and uh, we should have another one in a few weeks.